Uh, what? Where am I? Ah, Citizen Plus? Citizen Plus! <laughs> hey, what's up everybody, and welcome back to yet another episode of Back to the Future the Game. This is episode 4, and oh boy, let's go. Doesn't look like it's on. Um, I do not remember what I need to do, just saying. Make sure the McFly boy is prepped for his Citizen Plus treatment by the time I finish with my husband. How is Citizen Brown? I'm afraid it's worse than we imagined. He's gone completely antisocial. Darn. We're using every tool at our disposal to snap him out of it. But I fear that nothing short of a complete personality rebuild will bring our leader back to us. And it's all McFly's fault? Unbelievable, isn't it? One teenage hooligan has brought Hill Valley to the brink of ruin. Ah, well. Let me know when he's ready. I'll be tending to Citizen Brown. I gotta get out of here and rescue Doc. Yes, you do. Hello? What? Let me out of here! Sorry, sir, but Citizen Plus patients aren't allowed to exit their waiting rooms until the Citizen Plus treatment chamber has been suitably prepped for their procedure. Hey, could you get me a burger or something? The only food I've had today is a tofu dog. Regrettably, sir, the rigors of the Citizen Plus treatment require you to begin the process with an empty stomach. Uh... Why is all my stuff locked in a cage? In order to ensure that Citizen Plus patients don't injure themselves, their belongings are placed in a locked box until the completion of their Citizen Plus treatment. Injure themselves? It's a very intensive process. Some people can't handle it. Can I take a look at my stuff for a second? Why? I, uh, want to make sure my guitar neck isn't getting bent. What? Come on, man. My parents spent a fortune on that thing. Fine. Back away from the door, sir. There. How's the guitar? I guess it's okay. Good. Okay then, uh, I think we need to go up here. Jen? Hey, Jennifer! I gotta get her attention! Martin? Ah, that, is that you? Who else would it be? Where are you? Back in the garage. What are you doing in the Citizen Plus ward? Edna threw me in here. She can't do that to my son. How can I help? Not that I'm not happy that you're here, but why are you here? I'm looking for your mother. Mom? After you left, she and I had a big old fight and, well, she went and signed herself up for a full battery of Citizen Plus treatments. Didn't you tell her about Biff? I tried. You know your mother. Once she puts her mind to something, she's a regular force of nature. I figure that if I can just find her, maybe I can talk her out of this foolishness. Uh... Could you let me talk to Jennifer? Jennifer Parker? Yeah, she's in the room next door. Let's see, that'd be waiting room beta. Got it. You're all patched in, son. Jennifer. Martin. Is that you? Where are you? I'm over here, in the camera. Oh, Martin, aren't you in enough trouble already? Trouble? Jen, what are you talking about? You know, with all the drinking and the PTAs. Jennifer, oh, what's wrong with you? You sound strange. I used to be strange, Martin, but thanks to my first Citizen Plus treatment, I'm well on my way to becoming an average well-adjusted teenager. Citizen Plus? Oh no, Jen, not you too. Uh, okay. 
Why is your door open? Now that I'm finished with my Citizen Plus treatment, I'm free to go whenever I want. I'm just waiting for the nice guard to escort me out. Hey, on your way out, do you think you could help me break out of here? Oh, I couldn't do that, Martin. It's against the rules. Okay, forget breaking out. Could you at least come visit me? It's, it's kind of lonely in here. I don't think it's a good idea for us to see each other until you've undergone your first Citizen Plus treatment. Why not? Because your gosh danged hormones are out of control, Martin. Jen, this snap out of it. This isn't the real you. I mean, it's kind of like the real, real you, but not like the real you in this timeline. Wow, that's... I know, it sounds crazy. I'd never call you crazy, Martin. You're just sick. I should know I used to be sick too, but now I never want to spray paint a Buick or listen to rock music ever again. Punk is not rock. Fuck you. Hey, do you know what time it is? I don't like punk. No. She just insulted Didn't rock. I give you yeah. some kind of digital watch when you were done with all that brainwashing. The Citizen Plus watch? I won't get one of those for another five or six treatments. Rats. Hey, do you know what time it is? No. Didn't they give you some kind of digital watch oh, when you crap. were done with all that? The Citizen Plus. Rats. How'd you wind up in the Citizen Plus program anyway? My dad signed me up, and it's a good thing too. I was completely out of control. I kind of liked it. Jen, this whole Citizen Plus thing is a scam. Edna's using it to take control of everyone in Hill Valley, including her husband. You know, Citizen Edna told me you were having paranoid delusions, but I had no idea. So, what was your Citizen Plus treatment like anyway? It's... it's... well, that's weird. I don't really remember. Must be a side effect of the treatments. Uh, okay. Exit. Could you hang around for a few minutes? It's nice to have someone to talk to. I'll be here until the guard comes for me. Then I'll really have to tell him about how you're hijacking the cameras. Oh, come on. Don't be a narc. I'm not a narc. I'm a good citizen. Right, okay. Uh, camera. Dad. How can I help, son? I tried to peek over the guard's shoulder to get the combination, but he's too tall. Over his shoulder? Hold on. What? I may have it on tape. Zoom, enhance. Bullshit. Zoom, enhance. Ha! What? The camera was high enough to see over his shoulder. Nice work, Dad. The combination is 2 left, 8 right, 18 left, 32 right. All right. Hey, your guitar. I'm sorry I tried to throw it out. Yeah, the guitar's pretty cool, but this is what I care about. No fair making your dad all misty, son. Okay, uh... Oh, all right, yeah. Camera. Dad. How can I help, son? Talk to Jennifer. Can I talk to Jennifer again? Sure thing, son. Jennifer? What is it, Martin? Oh. Crap. Don't go yet, Jen. I wouldn't dream of it. Okay, uh... Good job. There. Why do you have an Okay, orcs? Jen, here's a little Just something why? I think you're gonna like. At least, I hope you still do. Martin? Jennifer. Oh, that singing is worse than mine. Oh, Martin. Martin? <coughs> what are you doing? What's going on here? I have no idea, sir. I was minding my own business when all of a sudden a horrible noise started coming out of that camera. Well, that's not right. Yeah, well, neither is this. No one scrambles my brain, you hear me? No one. I'm Jennifer Parker, rock and roller. Jen? Oh, yeah, right.
Yeah. Jen. No time for small talk, McFly. We need to get you disguised so we can walk out of here. Cool. Calvin Klein underwear? Really? There. How do I look? A little short for a stormtrooper, but it'll have to do. Come on! Nice. Okay, uh, I think that's it. So let's go. Door. Yeah. Okay, Hotshot, what's next? Now we rescue Citizen Brown, get the hell out of here, and get things back to the way they're supposed to be. Whatever, just as long as I get to break some stuff. I've got a lot of pent-up hostility right now, you know? Miss Parker. What the? Yeah. I'm here to escort you to the lobby. Your father's waiting for you. Can he wait? I was hoping that this attractive young man could take me on a tour of the facilities. I'm afraid I really must insist, miss. Relax, Jennifer. I've got everything under control. Really? Really. Okay, then. But first... What was that for? For saving me, dummy. Let's go, officer. You know, I'm probably gonna have to write you up for a PDA violation. Don't bite me. What? Rock and roll. Okay, uh... Okay, maybe this is going to be too I don't know what kind of movies they're showing Doc, long. but I don't think he's enjoying them. Hey, what? I better get him out of here before his eyes explode. Like, just what the... F that speaker looks really familiar. Oh boy, I like that thing. <laughs> Food tray. Can I have some of that? Feels like I haven't eaten in years. No, that's Tannins. He's not allowed to eat it until he's taken his pacification pill. We tried to give it to him an hour ago, but he still hasn't swallowed it. Let me try. I can be pretty persuasive. No. Stop fighting it, darling. You're only hurting yourself. Hey. Shh. Busy. Busy. Okay, uh... Door. Wow, they've really got this door locked up tight. I wonder what sick freak they've got in here. Ah! I should have known. Okay. I almost feel sorry for the poor guy. Almost. Oh! Hi, Biff. Looks like your intercom's busted. Eh, just as well. It'd probably be just a bunch of swearing and mixed metaphors anyway. Want out of here, big guy? Guess they don't work. Hey, Biff. Guess who your guard is? Peekaboo! Nice. The guard says I'm not supposed to give you any food until you swallow your pill. No improvement, Citizen Edna. Shall I recycle the treatment? Very well. Increase the overall stimulation levels by a factor of 1.21 kilocarols and start again. Just what is wrong with 1.21? Just like why? Okay. Hi, Biff. Eat the pill. Come on, Biff. Just swallow your pill. Okay, newspaper. Oh, Biff spit. Okay, uh, and just put that there. Hey, is that a public display of affection over there? What? Ah, uh, sorry, it was just a shadow. Stop goofing around and get back to work. Yes, sir.
Jeez, what have they been feeding Biff? Horse tranquilizers? Yo, God! Who, me? I, I mean, me? Yes, you. As you can see, that slacker of a technician is sleeping on the job again. Please be a dear and tend to the Citizen Plus control panel, will you? Uh, sure. Okay, Doc, I'm in. Now, how do I get you out of here without turning you into a vegetable? What are you doing over there, Citizen? Uh, control panel. Let's have a look. Jeez, where's the off button on this thing? Hey, an equalizer. At least, I think it's an equalizer. Uh, volume. Volume. Finally, a word I can understand. Okay, that moved him a few inches. Maybe I can blast him right out the door. No, no. Okay, uh, I go plug my guitar into this. Yeah. You can't plug my guitar into no. that. Okay. Uh, where's the orcs? Uh, is there one here? Come on, where's the orcs? Maybe just like this? I don't know. There's no jack. Uh Okay, let me go in there. Maybe there's something I can use. Hey! Get me out of here! Sorry, can't hear you in this thing, but thanks for the duds though. Okay then. Uh Really there's no jack? Can I go like around here? What are you doing in here? Uh, looking for the bathroom? The next scheduled bathroom break isn't for another 158 minutes. Right. I'm sorry about the discomfort, my love, but it's really all for the best. Okay, how do I plug my guitar into this then? Uh, I need a hint. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Oh, factory. I think I know what that means. I don't know what that means. What the? Looks like the aroma tanks have clogged themselves again. Oh, thank you. I hadn't noticed that. Come on, make yourself useful. I'm sorry about the delay, dear. This'd go a lot easier if you just gave up this madness about time machines and altering the past. You should concentrate on the future. There is no future for us. You won't think that in a few more hours. Okay. And now, uh, please, think about the consequences of your actions. Me? You're the one threatening the social order of- Okay, uh... I'm gonna if I... Lost the guitar into the mic. Hey, Doc. Let's get ready to blow this joint. What was that? You! What are you doing? Get my friend out of here, you nutcase! Okay, that was a little less dramatic than I had expected. Whoa! Oh, you're 
Your Honor. What? I can't hear you! You're welcome! That's a face. Alright, so. That seems to go well. We wait for the guards to clear out so we can make a break for your time machine. Hey, it's my mom. Hey. Don't talk to her. She could give us away. What the heck was Edna doing to you back there? She was trying to rebuild my personality from the ground up, erasing the parts she didn't like. Harsh. Shouldn't we go help? Once we go back and change history, none of this will ever happen. I guess. Where is the DeLorean anyway? I had the wrecked toad to my secret lab near Clayton Ravine. Clayton Ravine? As in Clara Clayton? Why? Is that significant? Well, Clara's kind of supposed to be your wife, so yeah. Fascinating. All right, How do you Dad? knock out two and one? <laughs> no offense, Your Honor, but why'd you marry Edna anyway? She's... she's kind of crazy. Yes, now. But back when we were first dating, her madness was tempered by an ironclad sense of right and wrong. At least, that's how it seemed to me at the time. Mom! Dad! No! They'll be fine. Once we repair the time stream, none of this will ever have happened. I guess you're right. The gods must be Looks like the coast is clear. Great. Let's go fix the DeLorean. I'm afraid I'll have to do that without you, Martin. What? Why? Well, from what little I understand of time travel, if you help me rebuild the time machine, your presence in the repair efforts could cause some sort of temporal paradox after we return to 1931. So what am I supposed to do? Just hang out here in Bizarro Hill Valley until you fix the time machine? Exactly. But don't worry. If things work out according to plan, you won't even notice I'm gone. You know, for a second there, you sounded almost as confusing as the real Doc. See? We're making progress already. See you soon, Martin. Good luck, Your Honor. Oh, and you might want to stay off the streets for a few seconds. Stay off the street? Citizen Brown? Emmett? He's not back. coming back, you know. What are you talking about? Emmett, without me to guide him, he's almost useless. Before I found him, he was a miserable failure who never finished anything. But with me to inspire him, look at what we've built! Yeah, you've inspired him all right. Inspired him to turn Hill Valley into a bunch of uptight dorks. I wouldn't expect a delinquent like you to understand. You think you've inspired Doc? I'll have you know that without you, Emmett Brown is destined to build a time-traveling DeLorean and a flying time train. Preposterous. Emmett couldn't even build a dog feeder without me to guide him. Yeah, well, he did that, too. You're not the only inspiration of Doc's life, you know. In my timeline, he married one of the sweetest women of the 19th century. Sweetness. Yeah. Emmett needs discipline to stay focused. He's so easily distracted. Okay, Your Honor. Starting to get a little concerned here. It worked! Ha <laughs> ha! One second I'm in the present, 
The next I'm six months in the past. Amazing. Six months? It took you six months to repair the time machine? Six months, my family fortune, and a sketchy deal with a gang of Libyan nationals. But it was all worth it for this moment. Ah! Emmett, don't do this. You need help. Oh, blow it out of your exhaust, poor dear. Now that I've escaped into the past, your pack of divorce lawyers can't... Ah! Mark, how long have you been waiting for me? A couple of minutes, maybe. That's curious. I set the repair time circuits to arrive only a couple of seconds after I left. Oh, well. I'm sure there's no need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuits. Here. What's this? Clothes for our trip. We can't have you traipsing around 1931 in that ridiculous outfit. Wait, our trip? You didn't think I was going to let you erase the worst mistake of my life without my help, did you? <laughs> nice. Fine! Leave! Not anymore, you don't. Time circuit set for August 26, 1931. You ready to go, Your Honor? Call me, Doc. You're probably really bored because I don't do much this talking. This is where I last saw him. You. Teenage you. You were headed this way, arm in arm with Edna. Ugh. Luckily, my erstwhile wife was never the type to kiss on a first date. If we work fast and stay focused, we can see to it that there. I mean, our relationship never moves beyond the hand-holding stage. Well, will you look at that? The old town theater. Uh huh. I haven't thought about this place in years. The missus made me tear it down back in '71. Said the movies were corrupting the younger generation. It was all nonsense, of course. I spent countless evenings here in my youth, and it never turned me into a hoodlum. Say, remember Public Enemy? Why, you dirty rat? No good yellow bellied stool? I never did manage to see Frankenstein, though. But you're going to. That's what we're here for, remember? Right, of course. The film that was supposed to set off a chain reaction in my imagination, inspire me with a notion that would launch my scientific career. You've still got no memory of what that notion was? Well, how could I? It happened in the brain of a different Emmett Brown. An Emmett Brown now erased by the shifting sands of time. Luckily for us, I do know something about my own brain, having lived in it for the past 70 plus years. Once we get my younger self re-inspired by that movie, nothing will distract him from his proper... <gasps> Great Scott, will you look at that? The town square? It's just like I remember it, only dirtier. Oh, the old... Come on now, Doc, oh, you need to... Let's go inside and check it out. First rule of time travel, Doc, never allow your other self to catch sight of you. It can cause reality to collapse or something. You mean? Right behind you. Don't peek. Go on. I'll let you know when you're gone. And don't forget, you're Carl Sagan. The billions and billions guy? The suspected arsonist. Huh? Just go with it. Uh, okay. Where's Emmett? He's there. Harry! You do show up at the oddest moments. Where have you been hiding? Oh, you know, here and there, you're a little hard to pin down yourself. I went looking for you last night, but... I believe I was off entertaining a beautiful lady. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never really got a chance to thank you. Well, I'm sure you would have escaped Kid on your own. Kid? Oh, sure, I'm grateful for that, but no, I'm talking about Edna. 
It's funny to think of now, but until that crisis, I actually thought Edna and I disliked one another. <laughs> Imagine! Yeah, well, sometimes first impressions are right. The thing is, you shouldn't let Edna distract you from, you know, the business at hand. Finishing your project for the expo and going to see Frankenstein. Oh, pshaw. Uh, I'm far too busy for movies these days. But, uh... And as for my project, it's practically done. The rocket car? The rocket car? Boy, are you out of date. I've junked the rocket car. But... More trouble than it's worth. I'll never figure out a propulsion system that does what I want it to do. And besides, its social utility is practically non-existent. Social utility? Since when do you care about... The mental alignment meter is a much more worthy project. The what? It was Edna's idea, and she's really been cracking the whip to get me to complete it in time for the expo. Emmett, I'm a little confused here. What day is it? Why, it's opening day! The opening day of the expo! Which reminds me, I'd better skedaddle back to the lab. If Edna catches me dawdling, there'll be heck to pay. Catch you around, Callahan. October 12th! Doc? Uh, okay, where do I go now? Wait, let's look at him so I don't know what to do. Yep, okay. <sighs> I'm getting quite Come bored. Come to think of it, it is a bit brisk for August. Oh, we're two months late. The expo's about to start and Teenage U is already in over his head with Edna. I always did have a tendency to plunge into things. Let's plunge into the DeLorean and get to the right date. No, it's far too risky. Remember how I was late picking you up in 86? Yeah. That should have been a tip-off. Something is horribly wrong with the time circuits, and the problem appears to be getting worse. If we try to jump now, we could find ourselves stranded in the Cenozoic Age. Oh, oh, oh worse, the Mesozoic. Then we're stuck? For the time being. I'll look into the problem and see what I can do. In the meantime, you can go to work on the other problem. Right. I'll go to the lab and see if I can talk teenage you out of- Impossible. If young me is already as infatuated as you say, you're not going to be able to talk him out of anything. Believe me, I remember. Better to focus on the more clear-headed half of the couple. Edna? Where can I find her? Where do you think? I'll drive. The DeLorean should still function adequately as a means of conveyance in the first three dimensions. Okay. I don't like this guy. You were right. Just there annoying. she is. My soon-to-be ex-future wife is nothing if not predictable. Do I really have to talk to her? I mean, couldn't I just hang out until you fix the time circuits and... Oh! I'll talk to her. You better get the DeLorean out of sight before someone- Hey you! Quit blocking the drive! All car of the future contestants need to report to the North Tent! Why not? Good luck! Oh, this is where it gets complicated. It? B R O W N. It's not exactly an obscure name. I still don't see it on the list. I'm sorry. Oh, for the love. Let me try this one more time. This is the Hill Valley Science Expo, right? First annual. Indeed. The purpose of our fair is to showcase cutting edge technology. That's right. And to burnish Hill Valley's reputation as a forward thinking community. And yet, you want to exclude the maker of the most revolutionary breakthrough of all. It's not that I want to, but... Oh, dear. Mr. Callahan, you do pop up at the oddest times. What are you doing here? I need to... Whatever it is, I hope you don't have to deal with Mr. Stonewall here. His sole function seems to be preventing people from accomplishing their business. Honestly, with him keeping the books, it's a wonder the Tannen gang got as far as they did. Uh... Have you seen Emmett? Uh, 
No. Oh, then you've heard all about his big breakthrough, the mental alignment meter. Isn't it exciting? And to think, he didn't even realize the import of his discovery until I pointed it out to him. I've never known anyone like him, so oblivious to his own potential. I kind of wanted to talk to you about Emmett and his potential. Funny, I didn't spot it myself at first. In fact, for the longest time, I thought She's I didn't annoying. even like him. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, those gut instincts are important. If you disliked him right off the bat. Oh, but I didn't know him then. Now I know him inside and out. Yeah, but... I appreciate your concerns, Mr. Callahan, but I can take care of myself. I know what I'm looking for in a man, and it so happens Emmett fits the bill to a T. That's Emmett Brown. Rhymes with clown, which I'm beginning to think you are. Just a simple mix-up, I'm sure. I've no doubt of that. Okay. Hey, Artie! Officer! Officer? Oh, right. Don't blow your cover. Will you please keep your mind on the task at hand? Can't talk right now. Edna again. Ahem. You said that Emmett fits your bill of requirements for a man. Yes. What would that list be exactly? You'd make a good reporter, Mr. Callahan. You know that? Well, his physical appearance for one thing. Emmett may not be Clark Gable, but he cleans up surprisingly well. I gave him my grandfather's white suit to wear at the expo. Oh, you should see him in it. He looks positively radiant. Looks good in a suit. Got it. And he's completely devoted to me. That's important. I've got no time or tolerance for playboys. Faithful as a Labrador. Check. Thirdly, and most important... Yes? Well, his mind, of course. It's brilliant, and it's virtuous through and through. His own mind map shows him to be a model citizen. Good brain, I see. And if it turned out that you were mistaken about any of these qualities... Say, what's your game? Just curious, just trying to understand the female mind. Well, understand this. I'm not some faint-hearted girl who'd run away at the first hint of trouble. I've made a big investment in Emmett. Not money, but I've sunk all my ambitions into him. I'd have to be thoroughly disillusioned before I'd call it quits with Emmett. Got it? Uh-huh. Now, Mr. Cub Reporter, is there anything else? Uh... Rather hard for me to picture Emmett as a chick magnet. Chick magnet? A guy who gets the girls, you know, motors running. Motors? Who makes them, y you know. You mean a chic? Yeah. Well, it's a matter of taste, I suppose, but when he's properly pomaded and decked out in my grandfather's white suit, Emmett just glows. Makes my heart flutter a bit just to picture him. You say you know Emmett as a model citizen, but you don't know him as well as I do. Did you know he once cheated some Libyans out of plutonium? Plutonium? What would Libyans want with plutonium? I'm sure he had a very good reason. Emmett's mind map demonstrates conclusively his brain is oriented toward virtue. This one time, to power one of his science experiments, Emmett hijacked a train. Please, there hasn't been a train hijacking in Hill Valley since the days of Mad Dog Tannen. Yeah, that's when, you idiot. What the heck is this mental alignment meter of Emmett's? Oh, it's an absolutely revolutionary uh, invention! Would. Measures a person's affinities, what he's attracted to, what he's repulsed by, that sort of thing. Interesting. And it really works? Well, of course! What's the point of inventing something that doesn't work? Or, anyway, it works well enough for my purposes. So you say Emmett only has eyes for you? Absolutely. It's almost embarrassing how devoted he is to me. Well, it's good to hear he's finally settling down. Yes. <laughs> settling down? You know, ready to stop playing the field, as it were. Playing the... Oh, you're joking! But I can't help feeling sorry for him. Who? All of Emmett's other girls, now that he's with you. Please, I think I know Emmett by now. There are no other girls. I wonder what's gonna happen to Emmett's little black book. Little black book? Oh, it's legendary. That's what enabled Emmett to become the, uh... Valentino of Hill Valley High. Gee, 
I wonder if he'd let me have it. You must think I'm pretty gullible, Mr. Callahan. Emmett's done a lot of shady things in this time. My vice principal warned me to stay away from him. Your vice principal sounds like a dolt. A gamble. That's all the questions I got. Very well, then. Hey, Artie. You see my Orioli? You mean this? Yeah, thanks. She gets to come and go freely, and I'm forced to wait. I love it. All right. Oh, how do I do that? Oh, no, not that. Hints. Okay, where's Trixie? Nope, she's right here. <clears throat> to all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. Uh, to all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. To all who... Oh, hiya, kid. Say, aren't you the fellow who... Got you to turn on Kid Tannen? You bet. You look younger without your mustache. That was a dirty trick, you know, making me think Kid had gone and iced Artie. I'm sorry, but it was the only way I could... Ah, uh, forget about it. I'm trying to. Yesterday's in the past. That's my motto. You gotta live for today. Right. So what are you doing down here anyway? Do you wish to pull the levers that control the future? Ah. Uh. At the expo, silly. Technology for a better tomorrow, and all that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's actually why I'm here. Listen, I've got a proposal for you. I have this friend, right? No dice. I'm only seeing Artie now. It's not like that. See, my friend's in a relationship with Edna Strickland. Oh, poor schmuck. I wouldn't wish her on anyone. Then you see where I'm coming from. He won't listen to reason, but I thought she might call it off if she thought he and you were, you know. Ah, you are an evil imp, ain't ya? Sometimes a guy's gotta resort to underhanded tricks. What do you say? Sorry. Ah. Uh. Edna might be a pill, but if I play dirty tricks on every dame who disapproves of me, well, well, I'd, I'd play a lot of dirty tricks. Besides, such stunts are beneath the dignity of Techni, Muse of Progress. Uh. So, who are you supposed to be? Don't, want to talk Don't to you these know people. your Homer? I this am Techni, Muse of Progress. You can tell by the lightning bolts. Must have slept through that class. I'm supposed to be a goddess like. I'm the one who inspires all the great men who make the discoveries. And women, too. Leave us not forget Madame Curie. I never would. So you work for the Expo? Yeah, ain't it a kick? I greet all the important guests. And on the final day, I get to bestow the golden sundial on the winning contestant. So Artie's working for the Expo, too, huh? Oh, Artie's doing swell. The papers made a big deal of him testifying against Kid. People have been beating down his door ever since the trial. The Expo's darn lucky they could get him. How's Kid's trial going? Slowly. You know what they say. The wheels of justice grind slowly, but infinitely fine. Except in Hill Valley, where they don't move at all. What? Nothing, it's just, you know, something I heard once. So no regrets about turning him in? None at all. I should have known better than to take up with him in the first place. But what can I say? I was dumb. I let myself get taken in by his charm. Charm? Eh, uh, come on, okay. Whose idea was it to put a science and technology expo in Hill Valley? Pete's me. Artie says it's all bread and circuses. But I ain't seen a single clown yet today. Techni, Muse of Progress. Not a bad gig. Artie got it for me. It's my entree into respectability. See you, Trixie. From this chamber of what- Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, let's just try this. Nah. 
Yeah, okay. Hints. Edna, hello. Ahem. Back again, Mr. Cal. Well, I was hey, thinking. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I found out about Trixie Trotter. Yes? Apparently they made her some sort of queen of the festival. Techni, the muse of progress. They didn't. Well, they said this expo would give Hill Valley a reputation. I didn't realize this is what they meant. What have you got against Trixie? It's the idea of it. Allowing our city to be represented by a woman like that. I won't stand for it. As a socially conscious citizen, I demand you discharge that muse. Trixie? What's wrong with her? Oh, she's hardly qualified for an honorific post at a public event. Look, lady. She fits the costume. She's an American citizen. And she managed to memorize all her lines. What more qualifications do you want? Oh, these people are impossible! Why do you want to get Trixie fired? One simply can't allow women like that to attain positions of respect in society. It creates a very bad precedent for the future. Does it? But try telling it to this poor sap. She's got him completely steamrolled. That's how they operate. Is it? Still, I could get her discharged if I had the goods on her. No doubt a woman like that has left a trail of scandal, and I'd find it if I were still a reporter. But I haven't got time to do the legwork now. I'm too busy with Emmett and our... his invention. <sighs> so you wouldn't hesitate to get Trixie fired from her job? If I had the goods on her. She's obvious Blah, now, blah, blah. That's all the questions I got. Very well, then. How about you? Have you- Blah blah blah. Uh, no. Then- Shut up. Oh. Shut up. Okay, thanks. Hints. Oh, Kubo. Yeah, he's here somewhere. It's not as nice as- Okay. Hey, pal. Oh, jeez, this guy again. Funny, I was gonna say the same thing. Shouldn't you be in jail with the rest of Kid's gang? I was, but then an opportunity availed itself and I... Sang like a canary. I prefer to think of it as exhibiting an admirable sense of self-preservation. Will you be playing piano for Trixie later? Nah. Why not? Cause Little Miss Goody Two Shoes thinks she's too respectable for cue ball these days. Have you heard from Kid lately? We're not exactly on speaking terms these days, on account of our varying degrees of incarceration. What kind of stuff have they got you hauling here? How the heck would I know? Electro this, robo that, dynamo the other, it's all Greek to me. You seem kind of angry about Trixie. Angry? Listen, kid, me and Trixie go way back. I know stuff about her that even kid doesn't know. Stuff that curl your socks. Really? Oh, yeah. And now to see her flouncing around the place, making like her stink don't smell, it just... Well, it just cheeses me off, you know? So what's so, uh, toe-curling about Trixie's past? Yeah, like I'm gonna tell you. Oh, come on. No. Tell you what, I'll tell you something embarrassing about me first. Like what? Well, under the influence of alcohol, my mom made a pass at me. Ooh! All right, Junior, you win. That was pretty embarrassing. Almost as embarrassing as this. Is that... Trixie? Yep. She's not wearing much. No kidding. She did a lot of these artistic postcards a few years ago. I got a whole set of them. Can I, um, have one? I don't know. You ain't gonna do nothing bad with it, are you? Hey, I promise. I'll only use it for the greater good. Wow. Okay. Hey, what's with your teeth? My teeth? 
Yeah, they're green. I don't know what you're talking about. Seriously, man, what's going on with your teeth? There's nothing. Nothing! I... I... Oh, crap. What's wrong? It's these. Dr. Frinkle's algae cakes? A crate of them fell off the truck while I was unloading it, and uh, I just can't stop eating them. How was I to know they turned my teeth green? Well, the algae part might have been a clue. Please don't rat me out the audio, okay? I really need this job. No problem, but you better let me keep the cakes. Sure thing, pal. Okay. Hang loose, pal. You talk funny, mister. Eh. Uh. Okay. You might want to take a look at this. Why in the world would I be interested in... Oh, what have we here? Oh, sir, Mr. McFly! It appears your muse has been inspiring more than progress. Trixie? Oh, no, no, no. What are you doing with a dirty postcard? What is she doing in a dirty postcard? I swear, Mr. McFly, if that doesn't convince you that Trixie Trotter is unfit to represent Hill Valley... I don't Valley... need you to lecture me about who I can or can't hire, Miss Strickland. Trixie's darn good at what she does. I don't care if she was once the winsome wench of Winnipeg. Her past doesn't matter to... Trixie? What is it, Audie? You know I don't like to pry, but what state did you grow up in? Province, Manitoba. Why? Not even an American. See, darling, the charter specifically states that the Expo's hostess must be a U.S. citizen, so if you're really a Canadian... I'm being fired? You're firing me? I don't want to. Here. Yeah. Take it back! Well, I'm glad somebody's listening to reason. Let's talk. Hey, voice is annoying. Trixie? I'll do it! I'll make that blue-nosed bitty eat her heart out! That's great! I got it all planned out. When Emmett shows but up... we gotta do it my way. Huh? I'm no good with improvising, and I ain't gonna memorize no lines. But I was in this play once. The Paula Maid's Predicament. I figure I could lift a scene from that. Okay. Only, I need a few props. Why am I not surprised? Some furs, a big diamond. It doesn't have to be real, understand? That makes it easier. And something from this friend of yours, Emmett. Has he got a photo album? I don't know. Uh, probably. Better bring it to me. Furs, a diamond, and Emmett's photo album. And then? Sit back and watch the fur fly. Okay, uh, how do I do that? I assume like this. Nope. Uh, how do I go? I don't know where his lab is. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. Have you figured out what's wrong with the time circuits? Not sure. Possibly. It seems to me to be a simple wiring issue, but I'm double-checking to make sure. All the basic equipment appears to be functional. Um, any chance I could borrow the DeLorean? I want to drop in on young you at the lab. Well, I don't know. The time circuits... Listen, I promise I won't take it to 88. Even so, I'm worried about letting it out of my sight while it's still behaving unpredictably. Tell you what. I'll take it on a test drive, one minute into the past. If it passes the test, I'll let you borrow it. He worked! Didn't it? I'm afraid not. In fact, the discrepancy appears to be getting worse. I arrived six hours ago. Oh, too bad. I didn't want to risk undoing any of the work you've done thus far, so I kept out of sight. But the time lag wasn't entirely a waste. I stopped by the hardware store and bought the parts for a chronometric analyzer. A what? A diagnostic device. 
See, I plug it into the time circuits and set them to cycle. When the green light goes off, I should have the data I'll need to understand the scope of the problem. Hey, no driving the exhibits off the lot! Looks like you'll have to find another set of wheels if you want to get to the lab. Okay. Let's see if I can borrow this truck here. No keys. I'll have to find my wheels somewhere else. Oh my god, this is annoying. Ah, oh, okay. Somewhere here? Nice. My future wouldn't be built so shoddily. Uh, hi, Miss Strickland. I was just... Break what you like, Mr. Callahan. It's no skin off my nose. Just keep away from Emmett's booth. Speaking of whom, I'd better go see what's keeping him. Um... I'll go check on him for you. I was just heading there anyway. No, you weren't. The last thing he needs is another distraction at the 11th hour. But... Tut -tut. Not another word. I've got the rest of the day all mapped out. Miss Strickland! I'm sorry, I don't recognize you. Heavens, you've shaved off your hair, but Carl Sagan? I'd like a word with you, if I may. I'm not sure it would be seemly for me to be seen in the company of an alleged arsonist. I think it may be in your best interest. You see, I know what you're up to. Let's go somewhere where we can talk privately. He said, I know what you're up to. Go. I'll keep her occupied till you get back. How does that do anything? Okay, I, I don't, I, I give up. I give up. Wait, do I need to use the skateboard? Yeah. Hang on, Emmett. Hope you're ready for a big breakup. <laughs> Emmett? Thanks again for your assistance, Detective Parker. Detective? What the hell is Kid doing here? Nothing criminal, I assure you. I was just getting a mind map of Mr. Tannen for our exhibition at the Expo. The authorities wouldn't allow Edna and I to stage a demonstration of the mental alignment meter with a violent felon, but this little baby is just as good. Okay, let's see now, what's next? Check the stew, sort the maps, ooh, I almost forgot that. Edna really is cracking the whip, isn't she? Well, yes, but she's got my best interests at heart. Without her, I can get so distracted. Did she send you down here to check up on me? Uh, yeah, she wanted to come herself, but... She's busy too, I know. Well, you're a poor substitute for Edna's lovely features, but make yourself at home. Thanks. No thanks are necessary. Without you, I'd never be where I am now. In love with a woman of my dreams. And a mere six hours from my first public triumph as a scientist. Wait a minute. Six hours? Jumping Jehoshaphat, I'm running out of time! <laughs> I'd be careful of that if I were you. Why? Well, the rocket fuel experiment must have stripped one of the teeth in the hand crank. As a consequence, if you turn it for more than 10 seconds, it Ow! sends out an electric shock. Hey, Emmett, what's cooking? That's an old brown family recipe for Hassenpfeffer. Hassenpfeffer? Rabbit stew. The trick is to add the cumin an hour after the carrots. Take a whiff. Mm, isn't that just about the best thing you've ever smelled in your life? It's, um, powerful, yeah. I've got it on a slow boil for later. Okay. I don't care by Trixie Trotter. Edna doesn't approve of that sort of music, but I find it very soothing. Oh. They say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense, but 
but I don't care. You see, I'm sort of independent. I am my own superintendent. Uh, my star is on the ascent. The mind of a degenerate criminal. This kid Tannen's mind map, as captured by our mind map helmet. You could tell he's a criminal just by looking at this? No, but when it's fed into the mental alignment meter... <laughs> Weird. Weird nothing. It's science. What's this? The mind map cards from the dozens of subjects I've tested during the last few weeks. I've got to get them sorted before the expo begins. Why? Edna's got this grand scheme to catalog all of Hill Valley citizens by their mental alignment. Isn't that cute? Not really. How does the mental alignment thing work? Here, I'll show you. Hey! The test subject wears this mind mapping helmet, which probes the brain by measuring fluctuations in skin conductance and electrical resistance on the surface of the parietal lobe. Uh-huh. When I turn on the mind mapping helmet with this radio switch, the subject is exposed to a series of visual stimuli intended to provoke a series of positive or negative responses, as indicated by these lights on the helmet. Hey, is that... As the responses are recorded, they're relayed to this special typewriter, which prints out a punch card that represents the subject's mind map. All I see is a bunch of holes. Well, to you, maybe. But to our mental alignment meter, this mind map is nothing less than a peek into your subconscious. Observe, as I place your mind map into the M.A.M. Layabout. Is that machine calling me a slacker? No, your own physiological responses did. Nice. <laughs> okay, so... Turn that on. Okay, we need to crank this up. No! Uh, slide. Okay. Who's that? I don't know who that is. Oh, I don't care. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's the stuff. Oh, crap. Maybe that was wrong. I don't know what I'm doing. Slide. Let's try again. I need to get to get his one bad. Ah crap. No. Stop this. No, 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 don't turn it off. This is my favorite part. Don't touch that! Okay then. Generator. Screw you. No! Generator again. No! Good. Emmett's invention makes him out to be a model citizen, huh? Well, we'll just see about that. Oh my god, stop giving such bad stuff for me to think about. Ah, Tannen, yes, okay. Slide advancer. Who's that? May or may not mean offense, 
You're making this difficult. Uh, kill child. Must be nearly done. Yeah, he likes that. That's Trixie. Okay then. <laughs> hey Emmett, I think your mind map test is broken. Oh, oh that switch just keeps shoring out on me. No time to fix it now. I'll have to take care of it at the expo. Looks like I'm not going to be doing any more mind maps. I guess I'll test this out and hope for the best. Okay, I think that means I got it right, which is good. Yeah. Bingo. Now Emmett's mind map is as bad as Tannen's. Now all I have to do is swap this out with Emmett's original mind map and Emmett's own machine will do him in. Okay. <sighs> okay, Emmett. Get ready to meet the new you. Hey! What? I almost left behind my mind map card. We're gonna show it off at the expo as a rare example of a model citizen. Edna kill me if I forgot that. She might kill you anyway when she gets a look at that mind map. Once Emmett gets to the expo, I'll try to figure out how to get him to put his card in the mental alignment meter. But for now, I better concentrate on making Emmett a slob who cheats on his girlfriend. Okay, uh, so... We need some ink. What's oh, this? Oil. That's a can of used motor oil, rocket fuel waste, and assorted chemical sludge left over from my abandoned rocket car. Gross. Accounting doesn't enter into it, but it is disgusting. Would you mind disposing of it on your way out? Uh, sure. And we need to accidentally on purpose spill it on Emmett. Hey Emmett, I've got a... whoa! <laughs> Whoops. What the heck? Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. Y your suit's ruined. Edna's gonna be royally PO'd. Wrong. What? When Edna gave me this suit, I realized that the probability of me keeping it clean was infinitesimally remote, so I spent a few hours whipping up this. Whoa. W what was that? A chemical compound capable of wiping the grime off any surface. Damn it, you'll make a fortune. Not anytime soon, I'm afraid. Due to an inerrant instability in its molecular makeup, after 12 hours, the cleanser's component chemicals break down into a series of cloth shredding enzymes, rendering it unsuitable for commercial use. Wait a minute, does that mean your suit's gonna dissolve in 12 hours? Hey gods, no. The solution dissipates into the air after it's applied. But it does mean that after this batch of cleanser ages another 11 hours and 53 minutes, it would eat away this suit faster than a thousand starving moss. And that would be a crisis of unimaginable proportions. Why? Because this suit belongs to Edna's grandfather, who wore it on his wedding day. Poor guy was gunned down just a few years later. Emmett? Well, enough wool gathering. Back to work. Okay, uh... That cleanser doesn't seem very portable. It isn't, but this is... A perfume bottle? Yes. No. I mean, yes, it's a perfume bottle, but inside is a concentrated dose of my all-purpose cleanser. With a little luck, this should last me through the next 12 hours before its component chemicals break down into a series of cloth-destroying enzymes. Clever. Okay. What the hell is that? What? Sorry, I, I thought I saw a tarantula. <laughs> okay, I think now I need to leave.
Wait, what? That makes no sense. Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing now. Oh, I can't walk through there. That's clever. Do I exit? I think I do. Okay. What? I was just thinking about the future. All that talk about Edna's grandfather made me realize something. Please let it be something about lightning. Life can be short, sometimes brutally so. So why not seize the day and grab your happiness while you can? I'm not sure I like where this is going. I was saving this for next Valentine's Day, but why should I? I know what I want. Emmett, no. I'm gonna ask Edna to marry me, right now. No! Oh, right, right. I'll wait until tonight at the expo. It'll be much more romantic that way. Just think. By this time tomorrow, Edna and I will be engaged and will be the toast of the scientific community. And I owe it all to you. You're welcome. Uh... Hint? Okay, exit. Hey, Emmett, I've got to go out for a while. I thought Edna sent you to make sure I wasn't getting distracted. Oh, you'll be fine. Yes, because you can skateboard on grass. Don't try that, kids. It will break you. Uh, crap, where's that fur thingy? Uh... Press button to experience Hill Valley's primeval past. Okay, if this dinosaur is called a Tannenosaurus, I'm gonna... Oh, <laughs> whew. Furs donated by Lamont's House of Ermin. At least they're going to a good cause. They're stuck tight in this tar. Yay. Hey, no, no, hints. I need the inventory. It's a good thing I did this before Emmett's 12 hour time limit, where the cleanser might have dissolved the fur. Let's slip out of those furs, shall we? Do I need anything else? What else do I need? Yeah, I need to go to the doctor this way. Yeah. Uh, okay. It'll be safe in there. Doc said to tell him when the light on his diagnostic thingy went green. Hey, the light's green. That means Doc could take the DeLorean out again. Uh, how do I talk to Doc? Where is he? Why can't I walk? Let me walk, stupid game. Hey, Doc. I mean, uh, Mr. Sagan. Excuse me a moment, Miss Strickland. I've got her neutralized for the moment. How's the plan proceeding on your end? About that gizmo you've got hooked up to the DeLorean? The chronometric analyzer? Yeah, the light's gone green. Wonderful. If the systems check out, I should be able to take it for another test run. I've got to run a short end, Miss Strickland. I suggest you think about what I've been saying. Oh, I will.
when did you land this time? Nine hours and 37 minutes ago. Ouch. Frankly, it started to get a little difficult to avoid running into myself. Still, the time jump yielded some interesting new data on the flux field. I'll run some more tests and we'll see what we find. Okay, I think you take this out now. Doc's trip aged the formula a few hours. Not enough to turn it to acid, though. Okay, then let's put it back in here. Hey, has the light gone green? Nope, no green light yet. Okay. Uh, let's go give the first to Trixie, and then I think we'll need to go back to Emmett to get his engagement ring thing at, for the diamond. Hey, Trixie. Are these furs good enough? Well, they're a little ratty, but uh, they'll work. How about the diamond in the photo album? I'll get them to you. Uh, I need to go back to Doc. Hi, Trix. Yeah. Oh, I didn't... hiya, kiddo. Say, smack in the... Well, it would be fun to watch, but it wouldn't get her to break up with my friend. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. So, shut shut up. Shut up. I'll get it. Didn't get in my way. Thank you. Uh, let's go back on this. Ugh. How's it hanging, Emmett? No, 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 no time for small talk. I've got machines to tune and mind maps to sort. Hints, players. Yeah, I, I did. Okay, photo albums, please. Do you not have any photo albums? Are you kidding me? You must be kidding me. Are they up there? Okay. Waste of time. Let's go back. Uh, yes. Uh, how long have I been recording for? I've been recording for ages. Okay. This better end soon. I'm tired. DeLorean, please be ready. Hey, the light's green. Good. I wonder how Doc's doing with the DeLorean. I need to talk to you. Excuse yep. me. Okay. Yes? Your chronometer's gone green. Excellent. I'm sorry. Yes, well. <laughs> yeah, any luck this time? Depends what you mean by luck. My arrival time is off again. By how much? Eight hours this time. Gave me the chance to take in three showings of Frankenstein. Good movie. A bit implausible from a scientific perspective, but I can see how my younger self would have been mesmerized. But what about the DeLorean? Oh, yes. I did get one critical piece of information. The chromium elements in my circuits became unstable during the temporal shift. I should replace them with titanium. Great! Now, unfortunately, titanium won't become commercially available till the coal process is perfected in nine years. Nine years? But there may be another solution. I'm going to fire up the chronometric analyzer again. Then, while I'm storing it, there you can... Uh-oh. Where did it go? The lab! Ah! You better get down there before she makes the situation impossible. I'll tend to the DeLorean. Age to perfection. Cool. Hey, Emmett, I'm back. <clears throat> oh, my. You know, I thought you were coming down here to keep Emmett focused on his invention. No, oh, she is. But she's generously scheduled brief canoodling breaks every 45 minutes to keep my mind fresh. Time's up, dear. Let's get back to work. Shall we? Now, Mr. Callahan, what can I do for you? Mr. Sagan says he needs to talk to you back at the high school. He does? Whatever for? He 
says he wants to give you an interview about his invention. One of those tedious cars of the future? <laughs> that can wait. I've got to keep Emmett focused on his invention. He wants to give you the scoop about his thrilling escape from Kid Tannen. <laughs> That's yesterday's news. Our invention will be tomorrow's story. He says he's got a lead on the speakeasy arsonist. He does, does he? Well, I'm not sure anyone cares about that old story anymore. But I suppose I could spare a few minutes in the service of solving a crime. Will you be alright without me, sweetheart? It'll be tough, but I think I'll muddle through. Try to keep him focused. He's so easily distracted. Don't I wish. Okay, so... Uh What do I do? Okay. Hmm. There it is. I've been looking all over for my portable anti-stick anti-stain formula. Where'd you find it? Um, out by the trash? That's strange. I haven't been out there for hours. Oh well. Are you gonna spray your jacket? It's looking a little dusty. Not until it's really dirty. This cleanser doesn't grow on trees, you know. Well, some of the ingredients grow on trees, but the rest are synthesized polycarbonate really detergent dirty? blends. I can do that. I'll wait until you're at the expo to show Edna what a suit-destroying slob you can be. Now all I have to do is set up Edna to think that Emmett's fooling around on her and everything will be ready to go. Uh... Hints. This? What's this? It's the placard we'll be putting in front of our booth at the expo. The scientist that caught Kid Tannen? A small exaggeration, but Edna says it'll attract investors. What do you think of the picture? You look a little... constipated. What? Edna said I looked intense. Yeah, intensely focused on taking it. I get the picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to find a better one. Unfortunately, there's a lot to choose from. Heavy. Extremely. Mother has been rather obsessive about photographically cataloging my life. Okay. Hey, Emmett. I've got an idea. What? Why don't I take your photo album over to Edna so she can pick out your new picture? That's a great idea. She's got a better eye for these things than I do anyway. Thanks, pal. Don't mention it. Uh, what looks like a diamond. Hints. Okay. I need to go then. Party! Doc! What's all the hustle and bustle? It's almost time for the opening ceremony. Holy jeez, I better work fast. I think I got it all worked out. When it all comes together, Edna will think you're the worst guy in town. I just need a couple more pieces. Well, don't go to too much trouble. What do you mean? Oh! You got the time circuits fixed. Not exactly. You see, I, I've been mulling things over, and... Uh, in the timeline you're from... The right timeline? Yes, yes. Uh, I've got a wife. A great wife, Clara, and kids, and a dog, and a bitchin' time train, and- And Edna? How does her story turn out? 
How does she end up? Oh, well, Edna ends up... Um... To be honest, she ends up kind of sad. Sad? She lives with some cats in a dinky little apartment, and uh, she spends most of her time yelling out her window at people, and collecting newspapers, and living in the past. I see. Perhaps we've been going about this problem the wrong way. Do we really have to completely obliterate my timeline so we can restore yours? Doc? Maybe we could have the best of both worlds. I could be with Edna, but it could be a little bit, you know, more healthy. Can you hear yourself? Do, do you know what you're saying? Let me remind you. It was her influence that led you to take over Hill Valley and turn it into this nightmare state. Come now. It wasn't as bad as all that. The crime rate was low, and the uniforms were nice. I don't believe this! All I'm saying is, let's stop and take a breath. This elaborate plan to derail my younger self's love life, is the short-term misery worth the long-term gain? Maybe we can find a third way. One where everybody wins. What do you think? Uh... No! I'm sorry, Doc. I can't go along with what you're saying. You don't belong with Edna. So you're determined to break us up? In spite of my stated wishes. Basically, yeah. Then there's nothing left to say. Where, where are you going? Why should it matter to you? Aren't you planning on overriding me? Here somewhere. Yep. Click the damn button. And after the rain, what else? An artificial rainbow, reassuring what are you all the doing, good dude? people of Hill Valley that their needs are taken care of, and life what? is sweet. Oh, you dumb shit. Nice rock, but I can't reach it. Agricultural advances will make it a breeze to feed our burgeoning population. Tired of waiting for Mother Nature to do her job? Just press a button. Presto! An artificial rainstorm drenches the valley's thirsty crops. Just borrowing it. Voila. Say, pretty snazzy for a phony rock. Gimme. Keep that up and I may take a real shine to ya. I'd rather you take a fake shine to Emmett. I'm working on it. Now bring me that. Okay. I brought Emmett's photo album like you asked. Let's see. Gee, he's not bad looking. In an egghead kind of way. Remember. I don't want you seducing him for real. I ain't a cradle robber, kiddo. So, you got everything you need for your big scene? Everything except for your friend. Emmett Brown, redheaded guy about yay high. He'll be the one with Edna Strickland. Not for long he won't. Great. Alright, let's go. Ah, uh, yeah, glitches, nice. <laughs> hey, Emmett, what's keeping you? Oh, hello, Harry. I guess I've got a mild case of stage fright. I'm about to play my big scene, you know? No telling how Edna's gonna react. Wish me luck! Oh, for Pete's sake.
You've, uh, got something on your suit. Oh, so I have. Anti-stain formula, work your magic. Emmett! Just in the nick of time. Um, step back now. We're gonna need a little space here. Oh, aren't you a vision? Like something that descended from the heavens. Yes, I'm feeling a bit elevated at the moment. There's something I've just gotta ask Wait, you. Wait, your tie's a bit crooked. I've been holding it inside for weeks now, and I've simply gotta get it off my chest. Oh. Uh-oh. My grandfather's suit! My formula! Oh. oh, look! Turn your head! I'll be right back, and we can try this all over and again! And it's Lethrop Brown! Huh? Trixie Trotter? How do you know this woman? I don't! I mean, I listened to some of her records, and I may have taken a picture or two yes. of her, but I... Go on! Deny to the world that you know me! Perhaps it is true, but I know you! All too well. What is going on here? You rich boys are all alike. You think material possessions can compensate for a broken heart. Well, you can take back your furs and take back this gaudy diamond Ow. too. I don't need your expensive presents. I need you. And more importantly, little Emmett Jr. needs you. Well, Edna, I... Don't... Edna me. Apparently you are not the man I took you for. But I am, see? The mental alignment meter proves it. I am the man you fell in love with. Let me see that card. I should have known. A degenerate criminal. What? Get out of my sight! I never want to see you again! That was rough, Emmett. I'm sorry you had to go through it, but things are gonna be okay. You and me can... Emmett? That went off great, huh? Yeah. Maybe too great. Damn it! Going through those tracks would wreck him. Damn it! Go away! Come on! Where are you? I'm sorry you had to go through that scene at the expo. Things didn't work out the way you expected, but everything's gonna turn out okay. See, I, I know how this story turns out, and... Story is over. <gasps> okay, Emmett, hold still. I know your emotions are running a little wild, but don't do anything crazy. <laughs> emotions? What emotions? My emotions are dead. <sighs> they say I'm crazy. Got no sense. Sorry for the I train, don't by the way. They may or may not mean offense, but I don't care. Stop! What are you doing up here? Don't jump! I wasn't gonna jump! Uh, then what do you- This is where I come when I want to think. Oh. When I want to be alone. Oh. Well, don't let me bother you. Go ahead and think. Can't you take a hint? I don't want you here. I don't need you. You don't know what you need. And you do? As a matter of fact, yeah. You need... to get your mind off your problems. Go see a movie. I hear Frankenstein's pretty good. Frankenstein? I tell you that my very life force is drained away, and you want to talk about Hollywood monster movies. It's a very inspirational monster movie. Especially the scene where they bring the monster to life. There's this big gurney that lifts him up into the air and... And see, there's this wild storm going on, and lightning crashing everywhere. It's amazing. And you just gotta see it, Emmett. It'll change your life. Look at my helmet. Which light is flashing? Yellow. Apathy. I don't care about movies. I don't care about anything anymore. And I never will. Don't give me that. You care. You still care about inventing things. <laughs> inventing is overrated. 
99% hype, 10% fraud. Name one invention that ever did anybody any good. Uh, how about... Uh... Think about Edison and the light bulb. That was a great invention. Eh, yeah, might have been. If there was anything in this miserable world worth illuminating. The automobile was a great invention, right? You love cars. Yes. If I'm lucky, I may be struck by one today. The telephone. Think how that invention has revolutionized the whole world. Yes. Now a person can be rejected long distance. Help me out here. You're getting on my nerves, Callahan. At least you would be if I still cared about anything. Me! You care about me, Doc. <laughs> you? Y yeah. You. You did this to me. I did what? I was perfectly content drudging away in my dad's law office. You show up out of nowhere, get me all excited about inventing, and disappear. Two months later, you show up again, you trick me into making a hero out of myself and getting involved with Edna Strickland. Then you appear a third time and pretend to be my friend just so you can yank the rug out from under me and send me sprawling into the dirt. Okay, I can work with that. I love you, Harry Callahan. Or is that even your real name? Marty. My name is Marty. Oh, so everything you've told me has been a lie. More or less. Why? Why did you ruin my life? Edna was no good for you. She was leading you down the wrong path. I see. You had my best interests at heart. Yeah. Just like my father. But there's more to it, see? Your father doesn't know your true path. And you do? Yes! How is it that I could create a mental alignment meter and yet fail to realize that you are completely delusional? Oh, what does it matter? The world is absurd. No, I know exactly what I'm doing. See? I did it for fun. You ruined my life for fun? Yeah, that's how I get my kicks. You bastard. And all that time you spent building up my dreams telling me I was going to be a great scientist. Yeah, what a laugh. Dreams are only for people with guts enough to follow them. You're saying I don't have guts? You? <laughs> Look at you. What do you know? A person like you? You don't know the first thing about me. I have more dreams in my little finger than you'll ever have. Hey, daydreams don't count. Daydreams? That's what they said to Edison. That's what they said to Einstein. That's what they said to Dr. Frankenstein? Yeah, and look what they accomplished. I'm sick of people telling me what I can and can't do. First my father, then Edna, now you! Listen to me, good. From now on, I'm living my life my way. I'm taking my own advice and I'm following my own ideas. My ideas, do you hear me? My ideas. Great Scott, I've got it. Got what? A solution, my invention. I know how to make it work. The mental alignment meter? No, no, my airborne personal transport device. The rocket car? Not rockets, not rockets at all. That was my mistake. The basic idea was sound, but the propulsion system was unworkable. But the lightning, the lightning! Suddenly the answer is clear. It came to me all at once, like, like... A bolt of lightning? Exactly! Static electricity! Super I and I static electricity powering the asynchronous oscillation of frictionless plates inside the- What's this stupid thing doing on my head? Damn it! Yeah, you're, you're you again! Here, I've been wasting my time with silly mind-reading tricks when there's serious science to be done. <gasps> and the expo begins at 8! <gasps> let's get the hell out of here before anything else happens! What?! I said, let's get out of here before anything- <gasps> Oh crap, huh? Uh Oh you know. I'm giving away my wheels. Okay. Damn it! What? This is the most boring game ever. I'm sorry I had to get you so upset. See, I figured you needed to... 
Forget it! This isn't the time for long-winded explanations. I'll help you finish your new invention. Great! The first step is to get me down from here! Can you climb up? I'm afraid I can't find a convenient purchase for my upper limbs. What? No handhold! Got anything useful on you? Only my wallet. Oh, and this portable anti-stick, anti-stain formula. Oops! Got any ideas for me? I think I used up my quota for the day. Hang in there. Very funny. That's slow. Oh crap. I can't swing on it while it's still attached to the statue. I can't swing on it. Oh wait, right, okay. Oh come on, hurry up, please. Down. Okay. Come on, stop glitching out for me. This stuff's dangerous. Let's get this. Glitch on the statue. Rope. I can't grab it from here. You're so slow, Marty. Hold on! I wasn't planning on doing anything else. Cool. Oh, this is gonna take a while. Really? Oh, okay. Arrow keys. Oh, what are you doing, man? This game is so glitched out. This is like the worst ever. Alright, sorry about that. I had to go for like a long time. Um, I do not know how to do this. Uh, do I need to grab him? Yeah, there we go. Ah, boom! Gotcha! Let's get out of here! Your pants! They're stuck! Do something before we're crushed! No. Ah. Uh... This? What are you doing? Trust me! Hold on! <laughs> what did you say your name was again? Marty! Marty? Thanks! Don't mention it. Whoa. Whoa. Uh. <sighs> The catalyst will need to be made out of tungsten, given the temperature within the converter will no doubt be intense. We'll have to harvest the filaments from all the light bulbs in my house. Your invention? You think you can finish it before the end of the expo? Think? I've got to. My future depends on it. Then let's go. Of course, the oscillating plates will need to be calibrated precisely. Even the slightest misalignment could cause the magnetic field to fluctuate in intensity, leading to sudden shifts in polarity. The results could conceivably be catastrophic. Ah, who cares? My thought exactly. Science should be messy and unpredictable, or else where's the fun of it? Okay. Oh, she's sad. Need a lift? Mr. Sagan, got the kinks worked out of your car of the future? Uh, not all of them, but at least the DeLorean's Monday terrestrial functionality remains intact. As usual, I have not the slightest idea what you're talking about. In fact, you remind me of someone... Someone I used to... <laughs> there, there, my dear, don't worry. I'm sure we'll all turn out well in the end. Maybe for everyone else, but I suddenly feel very much like someone who's going to be alone and unloved for a very long time. Maybe I should get a cat. 
nonsense. I can state with nearly 100% certainty that you're going to have a long and fulfilling life. How can you know that? I think you'll find I know almost everything worth knowing about you and young Emmett. And his friends. Tell me, how you much evil. do you know about Harry Callahan? You evil son of a bitch. Alright then. Guess we'll have to wait until the end the uh, next game now. In the next episode. Nice loading. Let me explain it again. I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. It was science! She used my science to turn Hill Valley into a police state. If Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the Expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dim just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. Doc. Oof. Okay. I bet you this song will get copyrighted as well. I think I had a copyrighted last time, so who knows? But yeah, uh, this was like a really boring game. Like it's like the second like movie of like any franchise. It's really boring, but it needs to be there to make the story make sense. Um, kind of like Back to the Future Part Two or. Uh, Trying to think of other movies that I've seen. Uh, Lord of the Rings 2 or The Hobbit 2. Yeah. Avengers 2. Thor 2. Now, Avengers 2 was alright actually. Most of it. But yes, I guess we'll have to wait until the next episode now. So, thanks for watching. I hope you all have a good day. Bye bye.